Tech Tour on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Dow AgroSciences Canada, redefining herbicide performance so growers can spray when they need to. Sean Haney here with realagriculture.com for another episode of the Tech Tour brought to you by Dow AgroSciences Canada. Today I'm fortunate enough we get to talk again. Again? To Len Juris from Dow AgroSciences. Hey Len, great to have you here. So Len, today what we're going to chat about is about innovation, right, and developing mm-hmm. products. And innovation can be uh, collaborative, mm-hmm. but it also can be customized. Right. Well, we actually use both facets because in our research program, we don't ignore any component that adds information to making a better solution. And in the different soil zones between the black, brown, and dark brown, well, wild oats obviously span that whole range, but they grow differently. And so we customize our solutions based on the wild oat patterns that are growing in those areas. So when we first registered Simplicity, we had one wild oat rate that covered all environments. Now granted, wild oats don't grow the same in the same density and populations in the brown, dark brown, because they don't get as much rain, the soils aren't as fertile. We recognize that in our research programs and realize that a wild oat rate, which is a lower rate than what we would recommend at higher populations, will give you that same excellent 95 plus percent control of the weeds. The weeds are always adapting and adjusting, and so in Saskatchewan, especially the central parts, Japanese and downy bromes are, are real problems. So we recognize from our research that Japanese brome is uh, very sensitive to simplicity. And so with simplicity, we say, here's a summer annual grass right now that we're developing because it's more than just wild oats now. Japanese brome is also quite sensitive to simplicity that the wild oat rate will now control Japanese brome. Japanese brome being a summer annual, we know that we have a summer annual grass rate uh, in the offing. So the only thing that really can confuse growers is that downy brome is a very closely related species to Japanese brome, and they're hard to tell apart. The big difference is downy brome is a winter annual, so it germinates in the fall and very early spring. Japanese brome, by uh, contrast, is basically a summer annual, germinates in the spring and summer. So if a fellow does uh, pre-seed burnout with uh, Vantage Plus Max, for example, he will control both the downy brome and possibly some Japanese brome that may have germinated at that time. Any brome species that germinates after that, 99% will be Japanese brome, so the summer annual grass rate, which is the wild oat rate, will control both species now, the wild oats and the Japanese brome. Same things really apply in terms of population and growing conditions and stages, but essentially now we're working on in our research programs to add Japanese brome to the wild oat rate. So how does that how does that differ? How does that work out to how do you, how do you research those grower needs to make sure that you're developing products that specifically fit certain grower needs, whether they're in different soil zones or not? Well, to go back to that first example, and I'll answer that second one, is we actually roll up our sleeves and go to those environments. I mean, we don't extrapolate. We actually go to the brown and dark brown soil zones, put out those trials under those exact conditions that those farmers that we're targeting with the new rates or a new set of conditions and actually do the research over time and over a wider area to make sure that we are robust in our recommendation. So that's from a soil zone. Sometimes we get certain situations like glyphosate resistant kochia, for example. It's a fairly new development. So we know there's a specific urgent need and so we then take the resources and saying in our toolbox in Dogger Sciences we have a product or product concept that can address those needs. What's really interesting mm-hmm. is that uh, crop protection products are moving more and more to being similar like varieties, right? So this variety works well in this area, it works, you know, doesn't work well in that one, and they're really, you know, variety, farmers are picking a variety that fits mm-hmm. in a certain area. Crop protection products are moving closer to that model. Yes, with one important exception, I think, uh, companies in Dogger Sciences, I think, is ahead of the, uh, the pack, are actually being forward thinking in addressing those needs once the industry or the agriculture community recognize that there is a, a need. So we actually then start creating a solution for that specific need. So in a variety, he or the farmer takes four or five varieties and see what grows best on his farm. We actually go to that farm saying, okay, Mr. Farmer, you have a problem with, in this case, glyphosate resistant kochia. We're gonna test our product concepts that we think will address that need, research them on site, and then say, you know what? This combination, like Corex to, in that example, where we have uh, two products and with the power of pre-pass in it, we actually now you know, have a more robust product because it not only gets all the weeds that it pre-pass got before, but Corex now gets tougher to control weeds like the glyphosate resistant mm-hmm. kochia and still offers all the same attributes like 21 day soil, uh, extended soil control of volunteer canola and other sensitive broadleaf weeds. Yeah, you know, on the tech tour we've been talking to a lot of companies that are developing new products and some of them are like farmers that are addressing a need, right? Mm-hmm. And they go out and they 
and there's, there's a lot of blood, sweat, and tears in developing these products. But the biggest thing is they've seen a need, right? So they hear from their neighbor, or they've seen their own farm where, you know, if I had this product, it would really, really help a lot of people. And it, it sort of, you know, diver science is a much larger mm -hmm. example, but getting feedback from the grower is definitely important. Oh, very much so, because uh, a lot of our uh, research is a two-way communication street. Now, granted, some of that end-use customer message comes from our sales and marketing function that shows the importance of how well those three functions and those three legs work together, marketing, sales, and research. Because if they're not communicating, then the message from the grower that has that need gets either miscommunicated or slightly off-center, and sometimes the solutions don't always fit. And just like a poor suit, if you have a sleeve that's a little bit too long, it sure doesn't look sharp on you. So we really pride ourselves because we think we're the best in communicating with all facets of our organization to address a farmer need okay. like this example. So we've been at lots of different farm shows across the West uh, on mm -hmm. the tech tour, and um, you mentioned resistance, right? Mm -hmm. And so uh, the product Corex um, mm -hmm. deals with the resistance issue. So right. let's talk a little about the word resistance. So it solves a problem, but how should growers feel about that word resistance? Is that something they should be willing to tackle? Should they be scared? Should they be panicking? Um, I, I'm assuming they shouldn't be panicking, but you know what I mean? Like how, sh how, should, that fe how should they feel about that? Well, th they should feel a little bit of all three. It's like a lifestyle change. Sometimes you recognize that you have to make those changes in advance. Some people are fortunate because they make those adjustments. Some actually get a, um, a warning shot across the bow and they're kind of in that panic or high anxiety stage. So what we try to do both in an education as well as a product formulation is really have a management approach to uh, our products, how the products are used, you know, the stewardship of them. But also then it's in our mutual best interest to make sure that our products have a longer shelf life. The farmer's best interest to say, hey, I can maintain the weed population so I can still use all the tools to my advantage in that herbicide sphere. And so it becomes a management approach, and the farmers need to really get their heads around of thinking, how can I use everybody's products, my seeding, my agronomic, to manage the weed so I, A, don't get it, and if I do get a resistant weed, then what are their shorter range of solutions that I need to actually tackle that problem? And that's where Corex comes in. It tackles that problem, but it's also a tool to manage resistance going forward so it doesn't either get into a bigger area of farming, or those farmers that are adjacent to resistant wheat populations, they can maintain a line of defense by using a proper management strategy. It would make sense to me that you know when you have that two-way feedback, mm -hmm. innovation. You know, when you have collaborative innovation, it actually speeds up the rate of that innovation. Well, very much so because there's fewer bunny trails. If we have a better understanding of the grower, or if that communication is much more solid, then we can more accurately tailor a solution for that. A problem because let's face it if one set of growers are having that problem other areas in western canada are either having that problem or soon will have that problem because we're all into farming there's always different variations of farming but they all kind of come to the same convergent point so we need to make sure we use everything carefully and judiciously okay Lennon, it was great talking to you again um thanks, it's always Sean. great to have you on the tech tour this is good. so That's thanks great. very much well we've got to remind growers they have to register for the tech tour contest right. where we're giving away uh, nighttime led spray packages lots of like, high tech before, lots of farmers interested in spraying at night mm -hmm. they can go to gotechtour.ca to register for the contest and uh definitely get one of those, their hands on one of those there's only so many hours in the day you might as well spray at night as well and as well <laughs> they can get more content uh we've talked to a lot of great innovative companies along mm -hmm. with yourself they can go to realagriculture.com backslash tech tour for all the great content. So thank you to Dower Sciences for once again for the sponsorship of the tech tour and we'll talk to everybody again soon. And thanks for the opportunity, Sean. Appreciate it.